Okay, hi every student. Today I want to continue the lesson that's uh, from 5, lesson 2.4, Pascal Principle. Okay, this one is one of the short um, uh, topics that just related with the what we learned before. There's a related with the pressure. Okay, let's see what is that. Okay, first one we need to generate the ideal about the transmission of the pressure in the liquid. So they're still related with the uh, liquid pressure, but now we need to transfer transfer from one location to an another location. Okay, let's see what's the uh, uh, idea about this one transmission. Okay, first one we're going to see a squish of a topage tube. Okay, how does the pressure that exerted by the thumb transfer to the mouth of the tube? Okay, let's see here the diagram. Okay, now the pressure is transferred from the place we go to press. Okay, you can see the diagram. The finger is pressed at the middle of the toad page. But now, uh, you can see the toad page that come up from the mouth of the tube in every part of the liquid. So that means when they press about the, uh, the part, that means they transfer the pressure. Then the pressure will from the center, they go to tube of the uh, mouth of the uh, tube of the mouth of the top page. So that means the pressure is straightforward transfer to another direction until the direction they got output. That means they can uh, the liquid or you say about the gas they will come up together. Okay, this one is one of the idea about the transmission of the pressure. Okay, number two, we're going to see the diagram again. Okay, this one's a related with the put a water into the Pascal piston. Okay, let's see what's a Pascal piston. Okay, this one we call it Pascal piston. Now you push the piston inwards. Okay, you push inwards so you can see the hole. The hole is a surrounding with the Pascal piston. When you just push inwards so you can observe what happened for the water. All the water, they will flow up. Okay, from the Pascal piston, now we need to explain your observation. Okay, so from here we can say, water flow out with equal speed. So every speed from the every hole, the water come out should be the same speed. Okay, the pressure is transmitted in every part. Okay, we don't care which one hole, we cannot stop any water to come out. So that means when it just press, the pressure they will transmit from the master piston go to every hole so you find it every hole they will uh, get the same pressure after that the water will come up equally distant so equally distant means the pressure should be the same okay now this one is a one of the diagram they show about the uh, transmission of the pressure okay for the liquid in into the piston Okay, now we go to see the diagram first. Okay, this is one of the short video. Eh? So we go to introduce the video first. Okay, first one, they inject all the liquid into the syringe. Okay, after that, they go to compress. So you can see the water. The come up from the distance should be the same. Okay, until you press complete. Okay, this one we how to explain about this situation. Okay, the explanation is when the piston you just push, okay, a force is exerted on the surface of the water. Okay, when you just push, so you find a force that exert uh, on the piston, the surface of the piston, that means they got water. When they just press, that means the pressure is produced. The pressure now they transmitted uniformly throughout the water in all direction. So we don't care the situation. Your surface area is bigger or smaller, sure the pressure will be transmitted uniformly to all the direction. So this one they cause the water to spur out from every hole. So important when the water just spur out because the pressure already transferred. Okay, now we go through the today topics. There's a Pascal principle. Okay, let's see what means for Pascal principle. Okay, Pascal principle is the pressure applied on the ancro fluid. Okay, one means of the fluid. Fluid, the meaning is either there's a gas, either there's a liquid. So we call it as a fluid. So this one Pascal principle must happen in the closed 
uh, closed system. So that means we don't have any A bubble inside the uh, the Pascal system. So this one is an example diagram for the Pascal piston. Inside is all is a liquid. So we don't have any A bubble inside. So we call this an anchor fluid. Okay, that's a transmitted uniformly. Pressure is transmitted uniformly from the first piston to the second piston. Okay, then after that, you need to add the word to all direction in the fluid. So this one is a definition for Pascal principle. So all the keyword already is using the orange color. Okay, hopefully you can give the definition is correctly. Okay, so important you must mention encro fluid. Then the pressure transmit uniformly to all the direction. Okay, then we go through the Pascal principle. Okay, now they got simple to study uh, about the hydraulic system as a free uh, the force multiplier. So that means in the hydraulic, uh, what's the function we're using for Pascal principle? Important, we need to increase the output force. So we call it as a force multiplier. Okay, let's see the diagram. Okay, this is a one of the experiment. Okay, they want to prove is it the output force can produce a multiple force or not. Okay, for, so the first one, they put 50 gram of the slaughter weight on the small piston. Okay, add the slaughter weight 10, 20, 50 or 100 onto the large piston until the water level in the both syringe are the same again. So that means you're using the force. Okay, when starting, you put 50 gram at the small piston. Okay, after that, you're using the, uh, the other, another side, the output one. You put 10, 20, 50 and 100. Okay, either one. Until the liquid becomes same level, then you stop. So now you need to record the total mass of the slaughter weight on the large piston. So repeated 3 to 5 with 80 gram and also 100 gram slaughter weight at the small piston. So we're starting by 50, then you continue with 80 until 100. So you see the output, output um, piston can support how many weight. So normally the output uh, syringe that can support more of the weight compared to the input. Okay, important, you can see the diagram, what's the difference? Important is the surface area. So you can see this one surface area is very big. This one is a small. So small one normally is an input. That means you're using smaller the force, you can produce the force multiple. So this one is a function for simple hydraulic. Okay. If the question asks simple hydraulic, we're using what principle? So your answer is still Pascal principle. Okay, so this one is a result. Okay, when starting, we're using 50 for the small piston, then 80, then 100. So from here, that means you put the different weight of the uh, slotted weight. So you find it, uh, the large piston here can support how many grams? Of the slaughter weight if I using the small weight at the small piston then the output should be more uh, slaughter weight that can support okay so the discussion from here we can get it is compare the pressure of the surface of the water in the small syringe and also the sludge syringe so the pressure they want you to compare the pressure from the smaller piston to the bigger piston so from here we refer to the just now the Pascal principle. They say about the uh, uniform transfer is it? So that means the pressure actually there's a transfer uniform. Okay, because this one is an anchor system. Okay, we don't have any a bubble. So if one to compare about the pressure should be equal. Okay, the pressure should be equal for the Pascal principle. Okay, after that, we need to compare about the force acting on the small piston with the force acting to the large piston. So normally, it's a small piston, then just small force. Then the final output, the force must be the larger. So that's why they become the force multiple. So your answer should be force on the large piston is larger. Okay, compared to the smaller Okay, now we're going to see the first example, a hydraulic system by using the Pascal principle to function. Okay, first one, there's a system that uses a liquid to transmit pressure. So that means uh, the hydraulic system, we're using the 
a fluid is a liquid to transfer the uh, pressure. Okay, now you can see the function. Okay, so before we go through the function, we're going to see the small force. Small force sure is from the uh, the input piston. Okay, example like this. This one is a F1. So F1 normally is a smaller force. Okay, smaller force that acting on the small piston can be produced a larger force on the large piston. So that means they're using the small force that can lift a car. So from here, this one we call it they produce multiple force. Function for the hydrate system, first they can transmit pressure. Pressure sure can transmit. Don't care bigger or smaller piston, the pressure must be constant. Number two is as a force multiplier. So this one is a function, it's a hydraulic system. Using the smaller force, then can produce a bigger output force. Okay, this one is an example for the hydrate system, uh, force multiplier. Okay, we can see about the different uh, surface area. Important is a surface area. Huh? Okay, we're going to recall back this diagram. Okay, there's a one of the video. By press about the small syringe, so you can see this one surface area bigger. After that, they produce more force until they can spoil the fruit. Okay, so you just press only press, I mean it produces more force. Finally, you can fight it. They produce a bigger force, okay, to hunch the fruits. So that means important is a surface area. Lah. If you never change the surface area, actually the force is no changes. So the surface area can help to produce more output force, okay. Later, we got uh, the formula to prove it. Uh, how come the bigger surface area can produce a bigger force? Okay, let me go see. Okay, this one is uh, how the hydrate system to function step by step. So the first one, we're going to see the input force. Okay, important is the input force. They apply it to the input piston. Okay, when they just uh, press it, so you find it. They press the surface area of the piston. So we label this one should be the A1 lah. So from here, at this one, input piston, they produce the P1. Force applies surface area, then they produce the pressure 1. So this one, pressure 1, they will transmit it. So number 3, they say about the pressure, transmit uniformly throughout the hydraulic fluid to the output piston. So that means from the first piston, they will transmit the pressure, to another piston, there's an output piston. Okay, number four, you must mention, through the Pascal principle, the pressure must be equal. Same pressure act on the liquid, surface A2 at the output piston. So that means from A1, the pressure transfer until to the A2. So from here, number five is the last one, that's about force output. So from here, they say output force, there's an F2, act on the output piston. So this one, how the process of the hydraulic system. So that means that normally we start from the small piston, finally go through the large piston. So now we need to do the comparison. First one, the A1 must smaller than A2. Number two, F1 also smaller than F2. So the last one you must remember, follow Pascal principle. How about the pressure? P1 and P2, suppose the answer is equal. Okay, we don't have any difference now for the pressure, must be constant. Okay, so this one is uh, step 1 until step 5. Okay, so from here, this one is the uh, same diagram about the hydraulic system. So from here, we need to explain. When a small input piston, there's an F1, they apply to the small piston, there's a area, surface area, there's a A1. Then a pressure sure will produce. So write the equation for the pressure exert on the small piston P1. So we write from here. How about the formula to produce the P1? So let's see the formula. P1 equal force over surface area. So this one is a pressure from the small piston. Okay, 
from the Pascal principle, we know the pressure transmit equally, is it? So now I need to create another formula for the pressure for the output piston. Okay, let's see here. A pressure exert on the big piston, there's an A2. They also will produce the output force. So you need to write the equation for the P2 on the big piston. So the formula is still the same, but now it's a situation, it's an output. So we put P2 equal F2 over A2. Okay, so this one is a pressure, pressure equation. Okay, now follow Pascal principle. We know the pressure transmit equally, is it? So we can put P1 equal P2. So let's see here. Okay, based on Pascal principle, compare the pressure from the small piston to large. Actually, there's a P1 equal P2. Okay, now I need to conclude. So just now all the force over area we need to put in. Okay, write the equation to related input force and also the output force. Surface area and also the a bigger surface area. So we need to combine. So you find it, they become like this. F1 over A1 equal F2 over A2. So this one is a formula for Pascal principle. Okay? Now we go through uh, some comparison. Compare the A1 with the A2. Okay? Surface area. So sure from the diagram, you can see the A2 is bigger than A1. So we just write here. A2 bigger than A1. Okay, number two, you need to compare about the force. Okay, the force sure is an output force, is a bigger. So that's why they can lift a car. So from here, we just write F2 is bigger than F1. Okay, now you need to state the relationship between the surface area with the force. So just now we do the comparison already. Because A2 is a bigger and also F2 also bigger. So we can say there's a directly proportional. Okay, let's see here. The bigger the surface area of the piston, the bigger the force produced. Okay, because we follow the formula F equal PA. Just now it's a P equal F over A. So I need to find the force. So force should be pressure multiplied the surface area. P is a constant. Pressure always constant. So that means when the force increases, the surface area also must be increased. The value of the multiplying factor, okay, let's see here. If you want to find the output force, so that means we need to do the calculation like this. A2 over A1 multiply F1. So this one is a value if you want to find the output force multiple how many times. Okay, so from here, A2 over A1. Okay, now we can see the application of the Pascal principle, where we use it. Okay, first one we're using for the hydraulic brake. Okay, let's see here, got how many piston. The first one is the master piston. So this one is a brake batter. So when you see the traffic light, they turn become red color. So you will press the brake batter. So brake batter, they will transfer the brake fluid so normally we're using brake oil lah. so the brake oil will start from the master cylinder that will send okay send to how many uh, piston here got four piston okay first one they send to the this one is a back okay back we got two piston okay both of the view also got same piston size eh? so this one got brake drum okay we got brake drum after that we got slave cylinder okay in front we also got two cylinder this one is a brake pad, okay, and also the brake dish. So from here, these two sides also got same size of the uh, piston, okay. So this one, we call it that using the fluid to transfer the pressure to every piston, then make sure the pressure must be equal. This one, they're using the Pascal principle. So the pressure must be transferred uniform. Okay, now we need to explain how the hydraulic brake to function. Okay, first one, the hydraulic brake system, a liquid we're using, they call brake fluid. They're used to transmit the pressure 
from the brake pedal. So this one is a brake pedal to all the view of the vehicle. So you can see this one is a tube they need to send to the front view and also to the back view. Okay, when the brake pedal just press, you'll find it the piston will be applied a pressure on the brake fluid. Okay, which is starting from the master cylinder. Okay, finally, the pressure will be transmitted to the every cylinder of the wheel. So the cylinder at the wheel that cause a pair of the piston to press against the surface of the brake dish or brake drum. Brake drum is a behind, brake dish is a in front. Okay, so when the pressure just transfer, you find it the piston they go to press, press the dish. So when they just press the dish, you find it they will hold the view to stop it. So from here they say the frictional force between this brake component that causes the vehicle to slow down and also stop. So important, you need to make it the piston to move. How to make the piston to move? Must have the pressure. Okay, pressure to let the fluid to move first. After that, they will produce the forces. Then the forces, they will clip, clip the brake dish. So that means, when they just clip, that means your vehicle can be stopped. Okay, then we go to the next part. Okay, the next part also same. There's the same thing for the hydraulic brake. Okay, you can see very clear they got arrow. So when starting, there's a brake pedal. Okay, after that transmitted the liquid from the main cylinder. Okay, there's a large piston. Okay, after that they will send until to the small piston. So this one you can see they got a brake drum. This one brake drum is a behind wheel. So small cylinder after the pressure transmitted will produce the force. So this one force they will uh, press to each other. Okay, they press to the brake shoe. Okay, the blue color is a brake shoe. When they just press the brake shoe, then the brake shoe will press to the brake drum. Finally, they will stop the wheel. Okay, stop the car wheel. So finally, the car will stop it. Okay, then this one also same. There's a hydraulic brake. So it's the same thing lah. The function should be the same. Brake battle. After this one is a master. After that, the liquid that will transmitted. Okay, brake liquid transmitted until go to the uh, dish. Okay, either the brake dish, either the brake drum. Important the piston. Okay, they will compress. Okay, after compress, that means they will hold the whole wheel to stop it. Okay, so now this one is uh, uh, one of the questions. They will ask, okay, when the car is pumped, you want to change about the tire, is it? So that means you need to lift the car up. So what they're using? Okay, they're using the concept for the Pascal principle. So you can see this one diagram. We're just using the handle. Okay, handle, you just move up and down. Finally, the car can be lifted up. So this one, we can see how they function. Important, inside we got two wafts. Okay, this one wharf is open and close alternate. Okay, let the liquid to flow. Okay, let's see the first one. What happens when the handle is pushed down? Okay, when the handle just pushed down, you can see what happened. Okay, wharf A is closed. You push down the handle, wharf A is closed. When the wharf A closed, that means this all thing cannot do anything. Okay, wharf A closed. So you can see the wharf B, what happened? Okay, wharf B should open. Uh. The A closed B must be open. Okay, if B is open, means the liquid can be moved to uh, the another piston, is it? So from here, they can say oil is pushed into the large piston. Okay, this one is open. So they will transmit from here, go down and go to the large piston. Then the large piston can be lift the car up. So from here, they said the load can be rises up. But this one, you need to repeat to do it. Lah. You cannot say you just press down, the car can be lift up. So you need to repeat it to compress. Okay, number two, what happened when the handle just pull up? So this one is a uh, opposite direction. 
just now is down now is up so when it just up that means the waft also open alternate so from here the waft a will close oh sorry just now is a is op closed now it's open okay now the waft a is open sure the waft b is closed so from here when it just open you find the oil from the reservoir okay this one is open already so from the reservoir enter the small piston okay this one is a small piston so from here now the waft a is open then we go through back okay go back to the reservoir then the waft b is closed so first round the b is open they will move from the small piston go to the large piston second round the large piston or the oil will go through the waft a to come down and go back to the fluid reservoir okay then the waft b is closed okay if the waft b never closed that means they can move up and move down so either one open and either one close okay first round remember when it's just down they want to leave the car second round when it's just up that means all the liquid must go back okay so you need to repeat it lah. third round then we leave the car again so they continuous so you find it the car can be lifted to the higher location okay so this one is a hydraulic jet okay it's the same thing they want to produce a bigger output force first one they're using why the oil is used at the hydraulic fluid so this one is question is always we ask it why we never using water why we using the oil so you must think about the characteristic for the oil okay let's see what's the answer here okay the boiling point of the oil is large and the oil cannot be compressed okay oil is not easy to compress another one boiling point is very high okay you also can say they prevent rusting oil can prevent rusting compared to the water how the handle is used to lift the load to its maximum height so that means the process that they asked about just now the process how come the, ha the handle can be moved it then the load can be lift up so from here the answer is the handle is pushed down and also pushed upwards many times you need to repeat it so that's why the load can be go to higher location okay state how the load can be lower okay after finish already i want to reduce the load how we go to let it to come down okay you cannot keep to compress it can keep to compress the main load the load will be go to higher so now they say i want to lower so important you can see this one release valve release valve when you just open that means all the oil will go back to the reservoir so from here you need to open open the release valve so the oil will flow back to the oil reservoir okay okay then we go to the first example question for the bus car principle so important diagram the diagram that will tell you some info so you need to jot down okay figure show the hydraulic system calculate the multi multiplying factor okay multiplying factor means they want to find a1 uh, a2 over a1 they multiple how many time already number two they want to find f2 okay first one we write the info first okay this one is an info first f1 there's an input for there's a 12 newton surface area for a1 is a 10 surface area of the larger piston there's a 50 then f2 we do know okay we go through first one multiplying factor multiplying factor there's a equation a2 over a1 okay they multiple how many time already so from here we take the 50 over 10 so the answer should be 5 no unit okay they just want to know they multiplying the factor is how many okay second one okay second one they want to find f2 so we just uh, recall back the formula how to find the f2 okay f2 equal a2 over a1 multiply f1 okay we just put in all the info okay 5 over 12 because 5 just now we find already there's the multiplying factor is it we just put the 5 multiply with the f1 that's a 12 so the final answer should be 60 
Newton. Okay, we just apply one formula only for the Pascal principle. Okay, then we try the example two. A technician that intend to design the hydraulic brake system for his bicycle show in the photograph 2.6. Okay, the input force the cyclist is able to exert 60 newton. So 60 newton should be F1. Okay, at the input cylinder, which has the cross-sectional area. So this one should be A1. Okay, what is the cross-sectional area for the output cylinder? So they want to find is a A2. Then they can produce a braking force 840 newton. So we know the info already. So we just write out. Input 60. A1 0 0.8, A2 we do know, and the last one they produce the force should be 840 Newton. So the question they want to find surface area for output piston. Okay, we still apply the same formula. Okay, F1 over A1 equal F2 over A2. Now the situation they want to find A2. Okay, I think there's a no problem for yours because calculation just like the mathematics. So we apply all the thing in. Okay, info again, formula again. Then we put all the info put in the formula. Okay, 60 over A1. A1 is 0. Point, oh, sorry. This one is 0. 0.8, is it? Okay, 0. 0.8 lah. So, you have me to change 0. 0.8. Okay, make sure the calculation is correct. Okay, 0. 0.8. So, I recall back. F1 over A1 equal F2 over A2. So, F1, we just put 60. 60 over A1, A1 is 0 0.8. Okay, if we're using CM square, then A2, the answer should be CM square. Lah. We never change anything. Then the 840 is a F2. Then A2, we do know. So that means this one equation, you take the 840 multiply with the 0 0.80 over 60. So you find why it's a surface area of the output piston. So from here, we get it. There's a 11.2 CM square. For the output piston okay just the same formula okay either the question call you to find the output surface area either the question call you to find the output force also can okay okay then we go to example three now the figure they show about the uh, schematic for the diagram hydraulic jet for the car what is the force that required to lift the load Okay, from the diagram, we got in four. Okay, let's see what in four. First one, this one is a load. Okay, uh, I think it's a load. Lah. The spelling is wrong. There's a load. Okay, the load is 1125 Newton. Okay, they fought the loss about the unit. So the load is 1125 Newton. Okay, this one is a large piston. Large piston, this one is a A2, 18. So this one should be the small piston, 1.2 cm square. Okay, important, we do know F1. Okay, let's see the info first. F2, 1125. A2 is a 18. A1 is a 1.2. Then F1, we do know. So that means we need to apply the Pascal principle formula to find what is F1. Okay, important, we know pressure transmit equally. P1 equal P2. Then we show the equation F1 over A1 equal F2 over A2. Now we need to find it's a F1. Okay, we still apply all the thing in. 1.2 is a small piston. Then the output Newton is 1,125. This one is a surface area of the large one, 18. So we find what's a F1. So your answer is... 75 newton okay so we just apply only after that we do multiplication so from here we can see 75 newton you go to apply you can produce 1125 newton so that means there is a force multiple so that means we cannot use our hand to lift the car is it so we need the hydraulic uh, the brake hydraulic jet to help we all to lift the heavy object Okay, example 4 is a still the same Pascal principle. They're using the strange. You can see the strange one is a small piston. Another one should be the large one. So from here, uh, we need to know the in 4. 
okay sorry here show you already uh, what well, we like to see how to do this one calculation okay the in four first f1 is a three newton d1 is a one okay d1 is a one cm d1 is stand for diameter now the question never provide uh, area they never tell you the area but they tell you the diameter so from here this one you need to do another step you need to calculate the surface area first okay you can see the info first d2 is 2.5 so that means this one surface area uh, this one diameter is a bigger size okay f2 we do know so from here i show you the info already the area of the piston should be the pi r squared because there's a round surface round surface the formula for the round area you want to find should be the pi r squared r is stand for radius the circle radius means half lah so if you want to find the radius that means you need to take the diameter dy by 2 we call it as the radius so from here we can see about pi you take the diameter dy by 2 then you need to square okay after that i do the calculation I find it become pi d square diameter over this one 2 square become 4. So now I can create the formula for the area piston. There's a pi d square over 4. Okay, now we go to see here. Area of the small piston, there's a a1 is it. So we just write pi multiply okay what's the diameter for a1 okay there's a one over four okay how about the large one the large one also is a pi multiple with d2 d2 is a diameter for the large piston 2.5 then you need to put square over four okay after that you press your calculator you see what's the answer Okay, for the first one, pi, you just press your calculator. Eh? Pi, actually, that's uh, 22 over 7. Okay, so, so should be the 3.142. lah. So you need to press the pi in your calculator. Then you multiply the 1. 1 square actually also is a 1 over 4. So we get the answer is cm square, 0 0.785 for the first surface area. Okay, for the large piston surface area, you get it, the answer should be 4.909. So, this one should be the A2. Okay, when you get A1, A2, that means the later we can apply Pascal principle. Okay, let's see the Pascal principle. Okay, just now, 3. 3 is a F1 over 0 0.785 A1. F2, we do know. But just now the A2 we find already 4.909. Finally, what is the F2? So from here the F2 should be this one. 3 multiply 4.909 over 0 0.785. So that should be the F2. So the answer is 18.75 Newton is the F2. So that means I just apply 3 Newton, then I can produce 18.75 Newton as an output piston. Okay, number 5. 3 of the characteristic that are necessarily be using the liquid uh, for the hydraulic fluid. So just now I told you we need using the oil, is it? Okay, what's the characteristic? First one, high boiling point. Okay, important the liquid must be high boiling point. That means not easy to boil. Although it's a high temperature, but it's still in liquid form. Number two is low lasting for effect. That means they want to prevent the rusting for the uh, hydraulic system. Number three, low density. Low density, we know there's a low mass. La. Low mass, that means they're easy to be carried. Okay. Okay, this one is number six. Okay, number six, they say Pascal principle, they apply to the fluid. There's a liquid and also the gas. Hydraulic system, they use the liquid while there's a pneumatic system and also use compressed air. Okay, 
monomatic system that want to compress the air transmit pressure in your opinion what are the advantages for the pneumatic system compared to the hydraulic system so new uh, pneumatic system they're using the gas for the hydraulic system they're using the liquid so they ask what's the um, advantages if you're using the gas so from here you can see the first one a use in the pneumatic system can be readily obtained because a is it a surrounding we got so they're easy to be obtained from the surrounding a after you use you just release the a lah. okay that's a more easier compared to liquid you want to release the liquid into open open the uh, reservoir let the liquid to go back is it when it just open then the a will come back a will move faster than the liquid okay number two is pneumatic technology is clear cleaner okay we do not using any oil they become clean if you're using the gas leak are less concerned with the pneumatic which can be leak the oil or hydraulic fluid so that means the gas they do not have any leak compared to the liquid when the liquid just leak that means they will produce a pollution okay number three is a pneumatic system is required low maintenance compared to the oil okay oil got high maintenance for the a1 they also have long operating life okay that means they can use for longer time if you're using the gas okay this one is advantageous for the pneumatic system okay depend the question if they ask about hydraulic system hydraulic system also got advantages okay you can find from the internet What's the difference for the hydraulic and also pneumatic system uh, the, through the Pascal principle? Okay, so this one is what we want to discuss for today's lesson. That's a Pascal principle. Okay, what you need to do for today's task is the from the textbook, there's a formative practice 2.4 about the Pascal principle. So hopefully you can copy all the questions in your exercise book and also answer it okay so our lesson just until here only hopefully you can understand what i give i will tell you about the pascal principle okay so everybody just thank you for your watching hopefully you like the video thank you